Hey everyone, it's Jaden here from Activate Fit Gym and today I'm bringing you something a little different for your workout from home series. So today I'm going to be doing a bit of an episode about breaking down the jargon in terms of some fitness industry lingo that we like to use. Um, just to kind of help educate you for anyone who isn't quite aware of what these terms mean um, and uh, yeah, bring you up to speed. I hope you enjoy. Okay, so first off, I'm going to talk about sets and reps, which are two terms that you would hear thrown around a lot, and most of you are probably aware of what they mean already, but we'll just break those down really quickly. So essentially, a rep is short for repetition, and basically that is one full run-through of a movement. Uh, so for example, a squat, um, one rep is all the way down, all the way up for a squat. Uh, and then you'll have a number of those within a set. So a set refers to the number of repetitions you're doing of that exercise without rest in one consecutive bout. So for example, 10 reps in one set of the squat, you'll do 10 squats and then take a rest after that point. Okay, so next up we're gonna talk about the terms static, dynamic, and isometric. Now, static, first off, refers to no movement or stationary. So essentially, that's an exercise where we're holding a position, um, say for example, a static lunge, there's no movement in our feet, we're just going straight down, straight back up again. Now, if we're talking a stretch, that's essentially holding one single stretch and just keeping that muscle in a stretch position for the duration of that stretch. Now, the dynamic term, on the other hand, is with movement. So that's complete opposite. If we're looking at an exercise, it might be like a walking lunge, which obviously therefore requires you to move as you go. Um, or it could be a dynamic stretch, which means you're essentially running your muscle through the range of motion, um, but you're not holding in one single position. Now, the other term isometric that I mentioned before, um, now that is actually referring to the type of contraction with the muscle. So, for example, an isometric contraction would be something like a plank hold or a squat hold, where essentially you're moving into a position that you're holding for that duration of time um, and the muscles are contracting, but there's no actual change in length because it's in a held position. So, if you're down in a plank hold, your core muscles are switched on and they're contracted, but there's no change of length because you're not actually moving your spine in a flexing or extending position. It's just staying there and holding stationary. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna talk about the phases of an exercise. So any exercise can be broken down into two phases. So you have your main phase, um, and then your secondary phase. So if we take a movement such as our bicep curl, for example, we have the main phase, which is called the concentric phase. Now that would be using the prime movers. So with a bicep curl, it's as I flex my bicep and I bring my arm upwards is the concentric phase. And then the eccentric phase is the down phase or the secondary phase of the exercise. So that would be as I lower back down for the bottom part of that bicep curl. Now, essentially the muscles that I'm working here, I have the concentric muscle um, contraction is with my biceps as I come up. The eccentric contraction is using my triceps as I stabilize and lengthen my arm back out again. Okay, so lastly, we're going to break down the different muscle groups that you use during a movement. So, for example, if we're looking at the bicep curl as we did before, we have three muscle groups that are going to be used here. We have the agonists, the antagonists, and the synergists. So, for example, with our concentric phase, as we flex through the bicep and bring the curl up, we're gonna be using our primary mover for that exercise or the agonist is the bicep. Now on the way back down through the secondary phase or the eccentric phase of the exercise, we're going to be using our antagonists. So therefore our triceps as we lower back down again. Now it's an important note there that with the um, secondary phase or the eccentric phase of the exercise, the antagonists are still getting a bit of a workout here. So we traditionally wouldn't think of training our triceps as we're doing a bicep curl, but they do come into play and they are still important. So that's a good side note to note. 
Uh, now, with the third note there, we have the synergists. So, they are the supporting muscles. So, things that are basically um, helping that movement. Um, so, for example, with the bicep curl, if we've got a quite a heavy weight, we're thinking about the muscles of the shoulder that are holding that position and maintaining that technique and form. Um, we have the muscles of the forearm, um, of the wrist flexors, everything there that's supporting, not necessarily changing in length, but supporting the overall movement to ensure that everything is nice and stable and strong as we go through and those primary and secondary movers are functioning through that movement. Awesome, so I hope you enjoyed that video, a little bit of education there for you with a few of the terms. Um, I hope you keep an eye out for our future episodes of the Workout From Home series. Uh, as always, you can read more about the theory of that with the posts on this. Um, and yeah, we'll see you next time.